Welcome back, bros, bros. Welcome to part three of the Lantern Year in Review video where we finally get to the Black Friday update. Make sure you smash that like button, hit the bell, subscribe, and for more for notifications. I don't know how YouTube works. <laughs> yeah, we're finally getting into the fireworks factory. It's happening today, finally. This is it. Yeah. This is the... Update we were working towards. Yeah. Uh, had a little bit of a speed bump called the Black Knight, but that's okay. <laughs> speed bump. Speed bump. This guy doesn't want to do a full Lantern Year in Review video. He wants to skip right to Black Friday, but I said, nope, nope, not happening. We're we're going through everything in excruciating detail. Ex yeah. And that's why you get three-part video. Yeah. But this is it. This is the big one. This is the big boy. Uh, yes. This is the... Whew! Tradition! The Kingdom Death yearly holiday. The long-awaited Black Friday update. Thing we wait for every year. <laughs> the most reliable yep. thing that you can get all kinds of information on. This one is great. This one is... I mean, this was like doubly awaited because we waited for uh, Dark Heralds when we had the Campaigns of Death update, but that one didn't really touch on too much. And then we were promised that we'd finally get a full-fledged Campaigns of Death total uh, know, overview, like they did for the Gambler's Chest. And uh, the definitely, overview. yeah, definitely did not disappoint. Well worth the wait. This is a. Uh, this is something else. This video, this uh, update is something else for sure. <laughs> this, uh, this update really hits me. Like after Gambler's Chest, you get to this update and you're like, my God, there's so much content on yeah. the horizon, you know? And the amount of things like, because I did this one live and then I thought maybe I'll do a video on it, um, but I didn't. Then I talked about it again during a, another live stream when we were first starting with the sim. We had some technical difficulties and I ended up just talking about the Black Friday's update for a little bit. Even like now, the third time or fourth time going over it, uh, there's so much in here. And we're going to talk about it all. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on, we got a new piece of frog dog content that wasn't shown before. This is a new fighting art called Soft Landing. Uh, soft Landing lets you basically ignore uh, knockback and collision. So if you would suffer collision with terrain because of knockback, roll 1d10. On a 6+, plus, you recover your footing and your knockback on the space directly before colliding with the terrain. Uh, limit once per round. Again, this is another piece of content that's inverted, mountain-centric. It's got a lot of synergy with the content that we talked about in Black Knight. Also, probably some of the upcoming stuff with Nightmare Ram and uh, Griffin as well. Um, it's another yeah. powerful fighting art. It's got some some really good tech to it. I like it a lot. And then we have serious timeline coming February 2024. The best... That's like a month and a half away. Yeah. The best title you could give to something. It implies that all the other ones weren't serious. Um, in the new year, once the dust has settled from the holiday season, we'll be pushed everything factories close before they get to the Chinese New Year. We'll be sitting down to present a serious timeline going for it. So this is something that constantly gets requested over and over. <laughs> Every Q&A, as we talked about with YouTube Video Year in Review, they always ask for an updated timeline. So, we'll finally get that in February. It will be serious and accurate. What's the next part of the update? Canada Warehouse. <laughs> uh, for this, for the serious timeline thing, I think um, we talked about this a little bit in the Black Friday video. Or, sorry, the Black Knight video. This is the Black Friday video. Um, in the Black Knight video, that this diagram... Initially, when I first saw this release, I was a little bit skeptical. I was like, ah, they just picked these random monsters. But... Um, as we look back at it, like I think this is the definite, like immediate release schedule for Kingdom Death, even prior to this serious timeline. So we've got Frog Dog after Black Knight, followed by Titan B, and then Last Screaming God before they move on to other um, expansions of Death Two content. 
Um, I also think this is kind of what solidified my opinion that uh, Honeycomb Weaver and Titan B are going to be split up as separate expansions, just because they've only got Titan B shown here and not Honeycomb Weaver. Maybe it's just to save space or for busyness or whatever, but I don't know. I'm feeling more and more secure in my my thoughts that Honeycomb Weaver is going to be split off from Titan B. Um, again, I need to be careful with my wording when I say Honeycomb Weaver being split off from Titan... Or not... Uh, Titan B and Honeycomb Weaver being split apart. Uh, it does not mean that you have to purchase them if you already purchased Honeycomb Weaver. Uh, but it would mean that you would have to get them shipped twice. But uh, I would think that maybe <laughs> they would ship together. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't want to speculate or confirm or deny whether or not they're going to be that. Even with this image... Who knows? Um, it's a tricky, tricky thing to evaluate. But um, as a side note, it talks about Chinese New Year. Um, not really anything comment driven in the, the update, but this year is the year of the dragon. So I, uh, I think we spoke about this in the first video. Yep. But it's it'll be interesting to see if there's any like dragon themed releases for Lunar New Year this year. Yep. Um, probably there will be. This section also is cool because it mentions some of the super 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 future monsters that are they're planning for the Ringtail Fox campaign. So they mentioned the Golden Bat, Iron Succubus, and uh, Ringtail Fox. And the Ringtail Fox itself. Mm -hmm. um, so. Yeah, the Golden Bat, I think, is probably a name change from the Great Bats that were mentioned in the original Griffin lore. I uh, agree. The Iron Succubus is probably some kind of new nemesis monster. So it is kind of uh, crazy to see like how far in the future they're planning when we might not see some of this content for another several years, right? Hopefully the production schedule speeds up a little bit now that they've, we're out of COVID and they've kind of got gambler's chest out of the way. But yeah, it's wild, hey? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we'll see. I think if anybody were to ask Poots uh, about anything, I think he would be happy to talk about it. So, mm -hmm. um, yep, I'm sure there's all kinds of cool stuff that are planned for it. Like a 2D video game should be coming. Deck building game should be coming. Terrain for the showdown board should be coming. There's all kinds of stuff that's coming. It's cool. Uh, Just waiting in the wings. Yeah. Owls. All kinds of stuff. Next, we jump into... Campaigns of Death. Yes. Um, sp specifically the boxing of it. <laughs> um, I'm looking at the uh, the diagram, the comparison diagram just first. And yes. Like, man, that is crazy, right? Like... It really shows how much the scope expanded for Campaigns of Death. It really went through its own process, kind of like Gambler's Chest, right? Like, even the size 40 to 80 page book going up to a 320 plus page book. That's that's a lot of book. That's, that's a lot of book. Um, yes, I agree. It's quite a jump to what you're getting and to what it was. Uh, just to be fully, like, I was fine with the original pitch for Campaigns of Death. Uh, I'm glad I'm getting what we're getting now. But uh, even when it was originally pitched, it was still very impressive, in my opinion, as to what it, what it was. What it is now is definitely a whole other thing. <laughs> Which is yeah, good. I'm, I'm really excited for Campaigns of Death. Yeah. I think I'm more excited for Campaigns of Death than I was for Gambler's Chest. Uh, going back and revisiting all these campaigns and tightening yes. up a lot of the systems and, and the stuff that they're adding, like the Pillar Strain system finally getting released in like a full rule set, the Synergy stuff that was announced, Death Worlds, uh, the upgrades, the expansions, and then they announced this Darkness mode, which we'll talk about a little bit later, but like... It's it's a lot of systems, and I really think this box set is going to turn Kingdom Death into like a perennial kind of game. You know, like this will be 
infinitely replayable at this point, and then we're only getting more content on top of it going forward. Correct. So, we had the grand overview. <laughs> Uh, this part just shows everything that's in here, which is Ancient Butcher, Dung Beetle Baron, Wise One, Infant Sunstalker, Vernant Lord, uh, the Dying Sun, Devil in the Gloom, and that stuff as you just mentioned. Uh, the Death World, all those other things. Uh, this does mention Scout Support, Knowledge Support, and then Darkness Mode. This is quite extensive amount of systems. Uh, it does rival Gambler's Chest in the amount of things that it is introducing, uh, has a lot of things to tie together. Uh, we're just going to have to talk about them slowly <laughs> to cover everything. Um, talks about all this thing. Basically, there's a this part here where it says Master Plan. We just basically talked about all this stuff. The hardcover rule book that's going to be included is going to be all the original 12 rule books, or 11, because Green Knight Armor did not include a rule book. So the original 11 rule books will all be put into a hardcover book. And then a whole bunch more will be included for all the different campaigns, all the different synergies, all the different story events, all the Death World stuff, the Darkness Mode stuff, all the rules, all those things. So it will just make <laughs> Kingdom Death and Heap three core rule books. The core game is the game. Yeah, I was, just, I was gonna ask you, do you think um, eventually we should get like a consolidated rule book, like yes. the ultimate rule book that has yeah, like yeah. Gambler's Chest, Core and Campaigns of Death all yeah kind of packaged together like they do it's that it's gonna be for, necessary because there is yeah they do that for ttrpgs rulebook compendiums yeah it would be neat so i i'd pay for that yeah wink wink um yeah it would be interesting um maybe can't or maybe uh kingdom of death 2.0 right yeah that's true so uh, first on the list, People of the Mirror Stone. Whew. This was originally going to be the Ancient Butcher-centric... Well, it still is, but originally it was going to just be the highlight of the Campaigns of Death, which I guess it still is. But um, originally it was going to be the only Nemesis... Or not Nemesis, Core Slash Finale monster that was in Campaigns of Death. Which is wild to think about now going back and looking at what we actually have. Which is a good choice. Because it would have been odd, as Poots had mentioned, it would be odd for the Ancient Butcher to do all that heavy lifting. To accommodate all those different variant expansions and be the core or slash finale in all of them. Yeah, agreed. So People of the Mirror Stone has definitely evolved. I think it was said in the comments after... You know, because when I was doing it live and everything, originally going over this, I didn't have access to all the comments. But it has been said going forward that people of the Mirror Stone and people of the Grindstone have kind of... Or no, grind people of the Grindhouse have now come together. Because originally it was pitched yeah. to be a five-year Manhunter thing, I think, was Grindhouse. Grindhouse was pitched as having the red eye, uh, red ink-eyed survivors. So... I don't really know if it was... I can't remember if it was like specifically Manhunter-themed, but I am a little bit bummed that we have lost the Grindhouse five-year campaign, a little, apparently. Might still be in there, who knows. Um, but I no, it, it, do he, think that... It was the, said in the comments, Poots has said that they're now combined. So I don't think the, the Grindstone will be in there. Well, that's bums me out a little bit more then. But I do um, think the Barbarian miniatures look great. And the idea of, like, narcissistic barbarians, I think, is kind of novel. It's novel, it's kind of weird, because it's, it's like, you know, you, you look back at, like, 80s, like, paperback barbarian novels, and they're all, like, super hunky, super handsome people on the front. So it's, like, not novel in that sense, but usually in those those books, they don't really, like, acknowledge that, right? Like, they're just, uh... They're just, um... They just are depicted like that, but they don't like physically lean into that narcissism. So it feels novel that the Kingdom Death Barbarians are really heavily leaning into that. There's also a piece of artwork that was shown in the update um, that shows the 
the survivors working out and uh, in the background they're all doing squats by like lifting these monster jaws and i love that that's such a cool yeah little, yeah it's yeah. reminiscent of the uh the m the whatever you want to say it but the you know the 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 emblem for the hunt phase where the survivors inside the the closing monster jaws so yes uh as you were saying <laughs> these are where the uh barbarians will come from or the the depiction of barbarianism will be with these four starting survivors which we had seen before we had alistair was originally released and then lucy was released as a gameplay and then eventually released also as painter scale so we had seen those now we have seen urza and uh zachary as well now these are very <laughs> these these are almost like not even starting survivors like these are more geared than i would say i send out some of my survive as a group the four of them right as a group these they, they have more gear than sometimes i'll have for the first two or three lantern years <laughs> yeah but i think that's kind of the idea of the poser gear right is because some of it looks like lantern gear, right? Like you've got like a lantern dagger looking thing and you've got like a lantern axe, but they're made of stone. So they're not actually like real weapons, so to say. They're poser weapons. Yeah, we'll talk about that. But I, I was just meaning that like these starting survivors, they're not using founding stones. They're also uh. not using like cloth. It doesn't look like, I mean, maybe this is just aesthetic because of the, like originally maybe the intent was not to release them and to include them in campaigns of death but you can see like zachary's wearing like boots and gloves waist he's got a belt on uh what is it alistair also boots gloves waist urza's got two weapons with boots like they have more gear than they're not cloth founding stone for sure so in the lore, the mirror stone is this giant rock that the ancient butcher uses to polish its cleavers on, uh, sharpen its cleavers. So that's why it has this kind of mirror finishes from being used to sharpen so much. Um, there's some uh, cipher language on this. Ah, uh, yes, I was going to say, should we preview? <laughs> <laughs> preview of things to come. <laughs> This yeah, well, update. this one I actually couldn't translate because it's... Well, uh, you say this it's one. It's not... How, yes. how frequent are we going to see the cipher language? It's kind of common in this update. Uh, most of it is translatable. This The mirror stone, unfortunately, is a little bit um, harder to read because of the size. So I wasn't able to get a translation but i'm assuming based on some of the other cipher language that's shown in this update that it doesn't really say anything yep. most of it just says like this is a spoiler like we're not talking about spoilers safe bet. um in in better words so i i am like leaning into that's that's what it says yes uh but but we do get a showcase of um a weapon that we can start so this is this is novel in the sense that every other starting location we've ever had in the game, you can't build gear at it, right? Like, mm -hmm. it's just used to innovate and go to the next uh, kind of settlement locations. But this time we can. So you can build the Poser Club, you can build the Poser Sword and the Poser Axe. And we see the Poser Club. It's a speed one, nine strength. Oh, sorry, speed one, um, nine accuracy, nine plus accuracy, strength one weapon club. Yep. Cumbersome and frail, and when you pose, gain plus one confidence token if you're wearing no armor gear. So I am kind of curious to see, we had talked about in the last video, Edlin from the Christmas update, uh, Christmas sale. She has a gear that gives her vanity tokens. So I am interested in seeing if these confidence tokens and these vanity tokens are the same thing, just with different names. And we don't know how you pose. It's maybe... Uh, Probably is actually a survival, survival action. action. Yeah, yeah. That's very likely. Just like how uh, Gambler's Chess has fist pump, I'm assuming these poses and stuff are going to be tied to the campaign like that. Yeah. Via language, probably. Having, having plus one confidence token, especially with starting gear, is an interesting mechanic because 
you can't really do anything if well, you we, don't have any other gear at that we point. We don't right? know so, how early this stuff is. You look at the recipes for these? Two times beautiful visage and one hide. Yeah, so the beautiful visage is probably going to be visage, gotten... Visage, visage, visage. Yeah, it's, it's going to be gotten through the 6, 7 plus probably or something like that. Just like the scout settlement event, the outs... Or that's kind of a, a scout location, the outskirts. You can spend an endeavor and then you just get one of the hollowed stones. I'm assuming yeah. this will probably be gotten from there uh, with the 7 plus. Which, again... Unless you're rolling in endeavors, you're not going to be you're not going to be wasting your one of your three or four endeavors that you get at the beginning of the game for the yeah, first couple I lantern the, years the, the on bar, a seven the barbarian plus. Barbarian survivors, though, they could also just have like a built-in um, like ability, right? Where they yeah. can spend confidence tokens to do something. Yep, but I mean, even um, the axe yeah, requires be... scrap. Yeah. So I don't know how early they so... are. They don't look very like late game they're definitely mid mid game but definitely neat um again this might one through six might just be a nothing like it could just be there but that's not true could be like a one to two and then a three plus or something but yeah the beautiful visage we don't know what those are so and then it jumps right down into another new 30-year campaign and this is people of the valley Previously announced as People of the Blighted Valley. I think they just dropped it as like, yep. a, like a concession for ease of speaking, I suppose. Or lore reasons. Um, yeah. So this is this is really um, the Dung Beetle Barons campaign. Mm -hmm. um, and it explains that our survivors are going to be settling inside of this massive dung ball. I think the artwork for this is really cool. I, there's a couple details that I didn't notice when I was taking my notes. But... The first is that the Dung Beetle Baron's castle, Dung Ball, kind of has this, like, relief of survivors climbing up the side of it, which is very similar to the Gambler chest, uh, or the Gambler's ball of snorers, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, and then also on the bottom right-hand corner of the picture, you see some survivors... Like, the starting survivors leading into the, the castle, but then there's survivors on the right that are, like, covered in some glowing blue spores. So it makes me think that that's the blighted part of the people of the blighted valley. Um, they're getting infected by some kind of weird fungus, and I don't know, maybe there'll be, like, some kind of zombie encounter monster or something like that. Some fungal zombies. Correct. I actually thought that as well. That's the zombie ant, right? Where the yeah, clickers. The, yeah, the fungus takes control of the body so it can bring it to where it can... This is the first thing I thought of when I saw the survivors crawling up the side along with being this blue stuff on them. Yep. It might and be... then we see that uh, survivors are able to collect mushrooms from some kind of crazy fungus chandelier. This is probably the uh, main settlement location of People of the Valley. I agree. And we get to discover exotic mushrooms in a story event. I'm wondering if this will be um, added as like a new special hunt event card where you can do like fungal gathering, like you can do herb gathering or mineral gathering or sky fishing. Um, yeah, there could be. In the core game in Sunstalker. Yeah, that'd be interesting. Seems like it'd, uh, it'd fit IMO. It would just be interesting because we need like some kind of special gear that triggers that, right? Like because we have a sickle and uh, yes. a pickaxe that trigger those events respectively but i don't know if they would just give you another sickle or i don't know like a mushroom harvesting knife or something like that um well it is we will be doing potion well i don't know about the potion brew but we can do stuff with them a new type of cooking or something brewing brewing yeah uh so i think this is going to be adjacent to cooking almost right where yes so it could it shows be... this it shows this new resource card the veiled stinkhorn um, where you can either consume it, archive this, and you're stinky for the rest of the year, or when you brew with this, add one instance of the Odor Mantle ability to the brew results. We don't know what Odor Mantle does, but it seems like you're well, able to kind of calm Or we don't even know what effects, brew results uh, are. <laughs> no, we don't. But like from, from how it's worded, it sounds like you're able to compound abilities like with certain mushrooms. You know, yeah. Like, probably get like these brews that are, you know, 
less functional and then later game you're going to be like stacking tons of mushrooms and just coming out with about seven instances of odor mantle yeah whatever (laughs) whatever (laughs) (laughs) yeah that's really speculative um it's nice seeing the fungus keyword back the last time we saw that was on the dung beetle knights uh um century fungus underplate fungus resource card um I don't know. I like little keywords like that, so that's... I'm pro random keywords. Keywords are good. So next we have the... And then we get to uh, see some... Well, we we have concept art next. Um, But the concept art is probably indicative of uh, more of this, I would assume. The same things that you're brewing with is what I took this as. These are going to be your, your brew elements. Yeah, I mean, the way it's set up and, like, the sizes of things, it could very well just be, like, concept artwork for background mushrooms, too, for artwork and stuff. I that's don't know. true. That's a... Uh, well, I would just assume you would one. need more than one type of mushroom to brew with. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, that'll <laughs> be, like, probably at least three. Yeah. Minimum. But there's this cool artwork. We don't really get to see this kind of stuff very often where they do concepts of creepy background stuff in King mm-hmm. of Death. So I hope they do start showing this stuff more often. Um, any of these that you would eat particularly? That I would eat? No, none of those I would eat. Although my favorite one is, is the I one. Letter I. The witch. <laughs> Letter I. That's my favorite one. Oh, yeah. I like the big corn stalk looking one. Oh, yeah. Anyway, moving down a little bit. We also see that we can use these mushrooms that we are collecting to build some fancy mushroom gear. We did, um, we were shown that there was mushroom armor previously, but we're actually getting a chance to see some of the gear cards now. Yes. Uh, surprisingly powerful. I think this seems more on par with leather, if you ask me, but, uh, I don't think we'll replace rawhide because this has the consumable keyword on the gear. So you could possibly lose your gear. <laughs> um, yeah, especially like um, insane survivors on Trollbird as a hunt event. Yep. You know, if you don't have any consumable gear, but you have mushroom armor, you're you're losing it, right? Yep. Another instance of dazed being used, something that would needs to be added to the living glossary. Um. We also have this one is the mask here, which is interesting because this is uh, the, it triggers frenzy, which is something you normally don't want, especially (laughs) if you're not geared for it. Like, I don't, I don't know why you would want to trigger frenzy, but uh, it's interesting because there must be some reason to do it because this is a pretty unreliable way to do it and it's a bad effect to have happen to you because then you lose the ability to you know use your fighting arts and stuff so it's definitely interesting as to why you would want to use this uh there's got to be something to do with frenzy i would i would assume i mean there's got to be more gear that kind of synchronizes with this right Yep. So but you can tell from all this, all the gear that's shown, they really are focusing on like the kind of, uh, like, yeah, hallucinogenic, like narcotic that's, kind. That's of That's what I was gonna say. Mushrooms. That's what I was gonna say. So the the fact that you were mentioning the, as we were talking about with the, the glowing blue survivors and being adjacent to this with all the spores and everything, uh, you know, being influenced by it or being some kind of changes going to them this being dazed and having frenzy is definitely playing into that next we have fungal fan which is an actual fan so this was first released with sen at gen well not this exact fungal fan but fans themselves were released with sen at gen con very interesting weapon type i hope it makes its debut with the proficiency and everything inside campaigns of death I thought the fan proficiency was super neat. Agreed. Yeah, it also has the unfurled uh, rules. Yeah. 
So yeah, it'll be nice to see fans, and I'm hoping, like I'm expecting that the fan specialization card just gets ported over to Campaigns of Death as like a non-beta rule. Um, yeah. But we'll see if it gets any changes between the two releases, if it's included. Hopefully it is. Yeah, Campaigns of Death is a good one to uh, include new types of weapons because it's a very quick way to permeate them throughout the entirety of the system of Kingdom Death if you're going to put them in the system-focused expansion. so Maybe like, we'll get our Cleaver weapon specialization and updated Butcher's yeah. Cleaver's cards. So if you were to put a fan type in Campaigns of Death, you could easily then just put, oh, well, let's add a fan to Spooter, let's add one to Lonely Tree, let's add one, and, you, and then you, there you go. Now you've got, you can you can add it to a plethora of node slots. If you look at the miniatures too, we also get an idea of what kind of gear that we can expect um, with the mushroom armor sets or from this mushroom settlement location. There's like a mushroom sword and shield. Makes me wonder actually if we're going to get like a sword and shield um, weapon specialization. Like that was that's a really common combination in Monster Hunter. So mm -hmm. I'm actually surprised that sword and shield as a combo haven't been used in the past. Yeah, they have. Uh, There's the uh, champion knowledge, or no champion regalism knowledge, right? Sure, but I'm I mean specifically like oh. having a weapon that is sword and shield, and not just a sword or not just a shield. You gotcha. know, like it's, yeah, yeah. it's always combined. Mm -hmm. um, so that that kind of gives me the idea that that might happen, but it could just be this survivor has a separate sword and a separate shield. You know. Yep. Uh, they're also carrying like some kind of fungal lantern on their back it looks like so we'll probably see like a fungal lantern gear there's some sort of mushroom long sword grand weapon type thing we're also going to see mushroom arrows and mushroom bows uh some kind of mushroom quiver so they've 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 done it all really mushrooms yep. are very versatile in kingdom death and that brings us to people of the wise one the last 30-year campaign included in Campaigns of Death. Um, this campaign features a Spidicules that has been left in a a lost settlement, basically. They've they've had a game over, and this legless ball Spidicules that was rolled back to the settlement has been forced to live there for who knows how long until some new survivors come along and start worshipping him, or it, I guess, as a... Um, kind of god or deity yep uh, we see some artwork where a survivor is kind of rummaging through a silken tunnel and there's skeletons and lanterns and all kinds of stuff down there i i am curious I, like what i would think from that mechanically is that you might be able to like take a trip down these tunnels and kind of dig through the garbage of the old settlement and maybe you'll find some weapons or gear or armor or something that you can pull out of there yeah uh, it's possible. I think that'd be a neat little... They have that in Gambler's silk. Chest. Uh, I think one of the scout events, you dig around in an old sum and you can find oxidized stuff. Okay. So very cool. Uh, yeah, so I'd like to see some of that. It's like kind of like accelerates you too, right? It might be a good base for... Yep. Now, do you have any thoughts on the crest for this campaign? Um, I think the crest is very telling. Well, I think the crest really signifies how the wise one really is like a mental threat to survivors versus a physical threat, right? Like he's yes, it's definitely it's like amputated stuff like that. The whole focus is on like control, like Spidicules itself is about that, right? Like the yes, the puppet stock, yeah. The, yeah, like it's able to get inside of your mind, and it has all these special disorders in this this campaign that that um, kind of hints to its still its desire to to manipulate survivors. And that yes, way, that's right? what I was getting at. This crest definitely looks like it's going to be featuring manipulation, gaslit by another monster. Mm -hmm. Now the interesting thing um, here is the puppet stock was cut off, so. Yeah. 
can't have that hanging around though you know it'd be pretty gruesome to just have that chilling out and yep your settlement um we also see the settlement location for the wise one there's a big endeavor box at the bottom here um this one also is just a hint uh the text in the first sentence underneath the the endeavor result says uh, nominate a survivor to hide the spoilers in this event. Roll 1d10. So, kind of just a cheeky little... Like, you spent the time to translate this, but we're not giving you any information, haha. So, joke's on me, I guess. And then scrolling down from there, we see the first of these disorder cards that we were talking about. So, the this is a uh, excluded card marionette it's a disorder that will only be added to the disorder deck at a specific time uh, we don't know when yep it says during a survival opportunity the monster controller may have you gain plus one movement or plus one activation which must be spent immediately they control you for this movement or activation limit once per showdown yep so i think this goes so back this to the like crest a... playing the wise one being the brain of that survivor that's why yeah. i think it was colored, it's, it's... colored pinkish it is interesting though, because the monster controller is still usually going to work in the favor of the survivor, right? So Correct. to me, this doesn't really come off as a disorder, unless there's some other mechanic well, that exists uh, in the Wise One campaign that I, now I forget. Didn't I? We did this. We did the Morse code here. What did it come? Automaton, right? The uh, as far as I know, the Morse code doesn't translate to anything. I tried translating it, and it just said. I think it came out as automaton, no but. Automaton? I don't know. Um, I'll trust you on that one because I'll no rerun Morse it again. Code expert, so it's not easy doing Morse code because it, well, it is easy doing Morse code, but these you have to divide these up yourself. It's too long. Mm -hmm. If you put it all in as one joint thing, it will be it'll be untranslatable. But yeah, if you which is which I, what I did, so yeah, I, you I had to know. break it up. I'll translate. I'll translate the cipher stuff. You <laughs> Yeah, I think it, I think it came out to autumn uh, automaton. Yeah, but I am kind of curious to see if there's some kind of mechanic that exists that forces the monster controller to act in a way that is like not conducive to the cooperative aspect of Kingdom Death. Yeah, you know, I think normally, that's very possible. It would yeah. be a very interesting thing to do to the game to make it so the control the monster controller acted maliciously. Yeah, like has to act in a specific way, or maybe the monster controller will have its own trait card that it needs to do something in like a specific way. There might be a new monster controller tile. Who knows? I don't know. Yeah, there's could... a lot of there's a lot of mechanical design space um, behind an idea like this, right? So yeah, behind all this, where the the thing is influencing, controlling the monsters, controlling how you play. Yeah, could be interesting. Also, I like the wording on this. It says, during a survival opportunity, which is something that should honestly be put on more cards. <laughs> survival opportunity. Yeah, that is a good trigger. Yeah, it's that a good trigger. a surprising trigger. Um, I never even thought about that. Yeah, good point. When the hell are survivor opportunities again? <laughs> yeah, there's tons Just of them. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> so next we have this, which is, I... Have yet to parse exactly all what this is, <laughs> but these are the things I forget what they're called. But these the there's the tradition where they hang things, uh, Japanese tradition, oh, like right? A spell tag. A spell tag, yeah. Uh, I have no idea how to parse these because I don't know if they're meant to be curses. I think they're probably meant to be curses because it says like I think fascinating. the way I. Because why would you want this? I know, I, I know. It's like why would you want this? And I think they're meant to be just really un unpleasant. But the reward for completing the wish is probably like very good, right? I don't know. It even has so, the question mark at the end of it, where it says "craft wishes." Faith is rewarded. <laughs> question mark yeah yeah i think it's got to be rewarded because i do trust the the play team in that because like when they initially discussed in the the, the encounter system right like the play test team was like this is too non-rewarding so i think even you have to you have to have some kind of reward to something like this and if you don't it's like 
okay, I'm never going to interact with this part of the, the content ever again. Oh, yeah, I agree. I, I, so, I more so meant, like, survivors are putting these tags on thinking that they're fulfilling a wish, but it's not. It's, a, it's like a juxtaposition. It's actually inflicting them because it's, it's the marionette trying to kill them. Or not the marionette, the wise one. Yeah, I have a, I have a feeling that these are going to be like a double sided card. That That's what you, I yes. Yeah, after some kind of threshold, or maybe it's something to do with like the wish keyword that they have. Like wishes in general will have a rule, where after X amount of something, X amount of Y, flip that card and gain the effects on the other side. Like there, I, there's got to be a benefit to it. Otherwise, what's the point? And there's already there's three of them shown, right? So it's. I base my opinion on that those things that they're putting on there, because this one's called it "Learned Our Language." When it's finally reading what they're wishing for, and I don't. <laughs> yeah, going back to that, those previous events, there is one kind of funny thing I made note of, and it's uh, on the sinister influence event. Mm-hmm. The the whole like the key kind of focal point is this prophet being affected by. Um, all these specters and stuff, but all the survivors in the background are just like looking at her, like, okay, like what's going on, right? There's a yeah. guy like scratching his head, so I don't think they can see any of that stuff. No, it's, it's just, just like, sinister influence. They're, yeah, they're just like, what the heck? Yeah, because she, uh, his hand, that's the wise one, the little hand she's reaching out to. Yeah. So she, yeah, she's being manipulated. Yeah. With sinister influence, which is again, which what I thought. Why I assumed those things, those tokens are curses. You might like. What was the other thing we saw that was similar to this? The uh, wave four expansions with the lava, the the pup, the pupa, the one that infects survivors and turns them into encounter monsters. The oblivion pupae. Yeah, this might be how you get a permanent monster controller that acts maliciously, or one that. Uh, Puts gives you those wishes that are actually bad for you because you can see she's covered in them. She got them all over her arms and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. This one's this will be an interesting campaign. Yeah, I think a malicious monster controller will be something super interesting. Good, a uh, good, uh, a good candidate for Dark Impulse Three. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so then we just the got monster more. Monster controller can't hurt you if you always kill them, right? Yeah. So next we go to Infant Sunstalker, which is labeled as a vignette monster. And you have to complete a five-year campaign called Dying Sun in order to unlock a node card that allows you to unlock fighting the Infant Sunstalker as a monster. And it adds a new story event to the timeline called Urgent Caretaker. I think this is a very succinct way to add this content to the game via um, vignette there's a lot of yeah via vignette via putting it in the node deck like it's not something that you just fight all the time mm -hmm. and especially because it's listed as a node 3 quarry still right well but it adds sunstalker also, to your game yeah like it adds the sunstalker on its own so you'll always have the opportunity to fight the infant sunstalker but also you know it doesn't need to be put into its own slot as a monster. Yep. And then, yeah, we get to fight the infant Sunstalker. So one of the things, and actually people were discussing this on Discord recently, like just today, was um, how hard it is to get some Sunstalker resources to make a lot of the good gear, right? So this will yep. give you the opportunity to start um, collecting some of those resources early in order to save up for the uh sun stalkery gear i can't remember what the actual location's name is but what the sky reef sanctuary yes yep i agree uh it'll be nice to have uh i don't know i, I never really found sun soccer too difficult but it'd be nice to have an earlier version of it to get some stuff yeah. especially if you're going for that katana stuff it does make me reflect on Black Knight a little bit. And so you complete the vignette, the five-year vignette, and it unlocks this this node card. So do you think Black Knight will do something similar after you complete the uh, the Squire campaign? Or there's got to be some kind of, like... 
Yeah, you have to unlock it for completing it at the end. Yeah. So that's that's how you unlock it. It'll probably be like Giga Lion. You'll probably get some other stuff too. Patterns, maybe strains. Who knows? But it does say right there you'll unlock it. So next we move on to the Ballad of the Green Knight. This is the I guess I Lord. lied earlier when I said Wise One was the last 30-year campaign. This is the actual last 30-year campaign. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is the 30-year campaign with the Vernant Lord at the end. This is a bound campaign, meaning that it's always going to use the same nodes, barring some very small amount, um, which is interesting. But, again, you need to use all these things in order to make the green armor. Hopefully green armor sees a bit of change, because some things are just downright impossible to make without the errata saying you can, and some of them are just really, really difficult. <laughs> mm -hmm. Needlessly so. Um, like Spooter, for example. I don't think you ever actually need anything from Spooter. You just need the innovation. Uh, so things like that are just interesting. This also shows it's a doubled up on a Node 2 quarry. So you have Node 1 being Gorm, Node 2 being Flower Knight, Node 2 being Spooter, and then a Node 4 being your Dung Beetle. No Node 3 because it's not part of the Green Lantern, or Green Armor. So, uh, interesting that you can sub out Node 2s for your Node 3. This is... Also interesting that uh, Flower Knight is a Node 2 quarry, because Flower Knight needs some help in order to be a Node 2 quarry. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't even have like an armor set, so <laughs> um, kind of hurting yourself if you're using that as your only Node 2. But uh, interesting. This is an interesting spread. Node 1 being Butch or Manhunter replacing Butcher is... Very interesting. I purpose, like, I love that idea. The fact to have these two old nemesis, the Lion Knight and the Manhunter, actually being direct replacements. I've always wanted that to be a direct replacement. Manhunter will be unique. Needs to be slightly retuned, but shouldn't be too bad. Overall, this is very... This is like the... Expansion, our campaigns of death like expansion free for all <laughs> campaign. <laughs> this yeah, one, I do wonder if it'll be kind of like a continuous rule set where you can swap out a second, like the next node for a second of a thing. So, like instead of a node two, like you'll have two node ones, or instead of a node three, you'll have two node twos. Like, will that be a part of the rule set in general, or is that just a special thing for Ballad of the Green Knight? Yeah, I don't know. I, I hope the Green Knight armor gets some reworking as well, because I don't want to always have to play Ballad of the Green Knight to make the green armor. Yeah. But... Well, I really anticipate the Green Knight armor becoming, like, pattern cards or I agree. pattern cards, even. If they were C pattern cards, it would be kind of semi-easy to pull them right from the seed pattern deck yep. like especially because you're building it like you'll have one that has gorm one that has flower knight one that has like they're very like there's not really a lot of seed patterns that have these monsters as requirements if any i think dung beetle knight has one uh a gorm has one um kind of um so there is an opportunity to build the seed pattern deck like that and then you're slowly like pulling green knight armor out of it as you get more and more understanding Yep. And then you're at least able to kind of get those cards before um, before having to collect all the, the gear, at least. It gives you direction, I suppose, is what I'm trying to say. The Prepare for Generations artwork is is uh, cool, because it, it, to me it suggests that if this is like a starting location, we might be getting Griswoldo as the sword for Green Knight armor, like, right off the bat, right? Like, you just start with Griswoldo and then that might be what um, starts pushing you towards building that set. Uh, yeah, it's with possible. The, back, the, the artwork, this like Wicker Man type structure looking like Fetosaurus. Yes. So that, that kind of imagery is, is repeated across 
this uh, the artwork for this this campaign. Yeah. So what did you, you call that we thing? We talked a little bit about that. Uh, Wicker Man. Oh, Wicker Man. Oh, we, how about we scroll down a little bit? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. It's called Wicker Man. Yeah. yeah. That's, right. <laughs> that's why Wicker I said we'll come Man, back no. to it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're just going, you're flying through that stuff. And I was like, wait, 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 I've got notes. Yeah, yeah. Well, I knew because I knew it was going to, I knew it was going to come up. But yes, there you go. The Wicker Man settlement. <laughs> so now what were you talking about? <laughs> Yeah, no, that's pretty much done with that section. I just think you're going to get Griswoldo kind of like right off the bat in this uh, this campaign. I agree um, because you're going to work towards tactics. Yeah, you got to work towards, towards the, the master Griswoldo. Griswoldo. That's, that's the, what I think. Yeah, that's the point. Yep. Uh, the secret tactics. I think that's cool. I'm really interested to see how that if that just gets folded into your tactics deck. We talked a little bit about that. With yeah, the secret like, tactics. I literally have nothing. I could. I have nothing. I. Uh, I have nothing. I this this could anything. literally be anything. But this kind of shows that they have put additional, um, I don't know, thought into the tactics deck. Uh, maybe. So than, I don't... I, I, you know, like, we were talking about how it kind of felt tacked on at the moment. So, hopefully this, this secret tactics... Maybe there will be, like, a whole new rule set for may, how I tactics cards are... can only speculate here. This could literally be anything. Yeah, it is speculation, yeah. Yeah. The, the, I mean, you could it could be something that's attached to the Griswoldo that's helping you make it the... Master Griswold. Who knows? It could literally be anything. It could be like, uh, you know, the my, my, could have milestones on the the front of those things. As you do this, as you do this, you unlock the yeah, potential. So yeah, I I literally have no idea. Could literally be anything. That would make sense with it's like attached to Master Griswold. Yeah, like it's not its own subtitle. So that would uh, I think that's a fair a fair assumption that you would have to kind of unlock Griswoldo. Yeah, because it says you want to reach its potential, so I, w- I wouldn't yeah. be surprised if those tactics were just a delivery system for milestones like observations. Um, we see some artwork for Wickerman's Ballad and Become the Green Knight. Yeah, more so story events this, that could be anywhere. I think this these looks more like Finale approaching one, Become the Green Knight. This looks like... I agree. Yeah, your core. This kind of looks like, you know, black and stuff like that. Like that time, 20 year, 25, 20... Yeah, I think this really kind of implies like that you see in the Become the Green Knight artwork. There's this kind of like ghostly spirit, and and the Wicker Man's ballad like here she looks like she's kind of possessed by this green smoke fog stuff energy. Um, I think it really implies that Federsaurus and uh, Griswoldo are gonna like be manipulating you in some degree like the verdant lord or the oh, yeah. armor itself for sure is, because there's no core monster kind of parasite or something yeah 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 there's no core monster in this it's just the finale which is the verdant lord so in true kingdom death storytelling the the monster you're settling around is what's influencing your lifestyle yeah my personal thoughts based on like the ultimate showdown that we see at the end there is that the survivor that you're preparing the whole the whole year becomes like the verdant lord and yep. you you have to fight your own champion essentially so yep um and the only reason i think that is because you see the green knight or you see sorry you see the verdant lord standing there and then that same kind of imagery of um Fetosaurus. am i mixing them up now yeah Fetosaurus is the shield shield yep you see that same kind of uh Fetosaurus face behind the verdant lord so yeah, it's supposed to be vivid magenta difficulty class. We decided yeah. to make this the most challenging this, fight again. This is pure. I was about to talk about this. this is, we can only pure speculate what this even means. I don't even. I don't even know what this means. <laughs> I. I don't even know. I can't even. So currently, the most difficult fight is probably like God Hand or Dungby. Who knows? Right? Difficulty class isn't a thing. That's not a mechanic. Yeah, but yeah, this is probably this might be some like internal thing, right? Like, does every Who, monster have a? I don't know. A That's color what I mean. This... Associated with it, it's a very anime like. Yeah. Like Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, or, yeah. Like, One Punch Man. It's, it's a thing, though. Who knows? We have no we have no frame of reference. Someone could. I mean, this is just Poot saying that. Hey, this is super. This is vivid magenta, and you're just what? <laughs> 
we have no vivid magenta glass. Yeah, we have no frame of reference. You're telling me you never heard of vivid magenta difficulty <laughs> class? All right, next we move on to the Dying Dun five year campaign. Dying Dun. Yeah, the Dying Dun. I imagine this typo is a lot funnier for Australian Kingdom Death players than anybody else. Maybe. Five-year campaigns. Um, Five-year campaigns. <laughs> uh, so this one is interesting. We were talking about this before recording, about the dying done. So this uh, small group of survivors head into the darkness in search of a lantern that might save their dying done. So not much actually is said about the dying done. But we know the dying done is how you unlock the uh, uh, infant sunstalker. But not much is actually yeah. said there. I thought there was I thought there was something else, but I was wrong. <laughs> you have any comments about dying done? Um, no, it's uh, cool that we have um, names for the intimacy couple now. Uh, seems like a long time in the making, I guess. But yep, funny regardless. I agree. Um, I like that they use the warrior of the sun male armor for the campaign, and that the warrior of the sun female. Um, survivor will be used to some degree as well. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to that because they've really, they kind of like, they lead you on like a little bit with that, right? Like, ooh, how's yep. she going to fit in the story? So I yeah, think they we got me. I'm, I'm hooked. Yeah, I think it's going to be more, now that we've seen the Black Knight, how that's going to work, I would not be surprised if it works the same way with those uh, individual stories and individual milestones. So I wouldn't doubt yeah. if that one survivor the girl that was shown uh the one that we were talking about the one that we had never seen it was just concept art that they're now going to make into a mini she probably just turns into a person of the sun during the su during the story oh yeah she could yeah that's true she could be like it could be like another zelda reference like zelda yep. transforming into chic kind of thing i like that that'd be funny i appreciate that reference uh, uh, but yeah, other than that, there's there's not much to talk about in regards to what we were shown. Nope. Now we have something to talk about, however. Now we have Devil in the Gloom. So Devil, Devil in the Gloom. Gloom. Right in the building uh, society from the ground up, five-year campaigns explore the personal triumphs and tragedies of particular survivors, the consequences of which may ripple across your future campaigns as strange mile or strained milestones. So again, we saw this with the... Black Knight. Now, the Black Knight didn't mention strain milestones, but the Black Knight itself, as we talked about, it does give you stuff to that will ripple across your whole campaigns forever because it changes the way Mount, uh, with the Mountain Lion, the way White Lion can play going forward. I assume this to be much the same. This is an interesting one. This is a Slenderman has secured its way into the world through Eve. Eve is the survivor we were talking about before that had the perfect slayer now is given her indomitable thing small team much find an ancient gorm so eve may join its tar filled pit sealing the evil in its black depths so here you see the indomitable survivor eve which has included one miniature one indomitable resource one indomitable gear one pattern you can see the golden bronzing what is it is bronze gold what would you call this gold gold uh weapon this is seems to be the staple of indomitable survivors we've seen this now with long claw nor we also saw it on morgue so this weapon here it seems to be the way that they're going to showcase these white boxes going forward yes uh I think it's cool. So that weapon is supposed to be a Vespertine pole axe. So this has Correct. a lot of synchronicity with Flower Knight as well. Just uh, Correct. on virtue of being an indomitable weapon. Yes. Now, it, one indomitable resource probably means it's a Flower Knight resource, I would assume. I agree, yeah. So this is a Flower Knight buff. So that's good. Here's the interesting thing. Small team must find an ancient Gorm. <laughs> So the ancient yeah. Gorm was shown off as part of the 2020 Black Friday, right? The 2020, I thought. 
2022, I mean. 2022. 2022. Yeah, 2022. Um, I think it might have been the last time there was a Campaigns of Death update or something like that. It was one of the big ones. Is at the very end, uh, Ancient Gorm's miniature kind of teaser image. Very interesting. Uh, so Bra brought this up right before we talked because um, I didn't really pick up on that little kind of note, but it it really feels like Campaigns of Death might also include this Ancient Gore miniature as like a uh, the finale bonus, of this just five year campaign. Yeah. You've got to beat the Ancient Gorm in order to um, to get to these tar pits or whatever. Yeah, I just uh, now noticed she's wearing yeah. one. Boot. <laughs> just one piece of armor, yeah. Yeah, I just noticed it. On her leg. At first I thought she might have had, like, King's Curse, but I don't think that's King's Curse. No, King's I don't armor. think so either. Just, like, lantern armor or something like that. Now we go on to the campaign system for uh, node cards, which is interesting. <laughs> we can only speculate on how exactly this works, but it tries to explain it. For example, here they give the White Lion, where it says you it has a prologue. It says Node 1 Quarry up in the top right. Then it says you do your prologue. This is it, the first monster, which is interesting because I thought it was called the first story, but the first monster, I guess. Maybe it will be a new one. There might be a new prologue that's yeah. uh, included in Campaigns of Death, right? Then you add the Quarry, which is White Lion, and then it said, if your dead settlement total is 3+, plus." Add Fat Cat Fever Pillar Card to this campaign. Now, this is the game over reward. When you... Normally it says it starts with plus one damage because of it's fat or whatever. That's what this is. That's fat... I guess Fat Cat Fever is just going to be how you integrate all those game over rewards going forward. I love that. Which is interesting. Next you have the campaign cards. Uh, campaign cards are interesting... <laughs> uh i don't know exactly what it is they do other than just show you what a campaign you're going to put on your timeline uh neat i don't know if you draw these at random or you just pick them but it's cool to have them i guess next you have campaign um, type which is for this one people lanterns foretold meaning that you have no randomization when it's foretold this is the same as uh, the gambler's chest, correct, was also shown to be foretold. Uh, yes, I, well, it, that language wasn't used before, but it is because in the back of the, or when it talks about like nodes and stuff like that, it talks about how the people of the Dreamkeeper can't be modified, like, altered, yeah. basically, yeah, or shouldn't be altered. But I mean, it's your game; you can do what you want. Yep. Yeah. So this is the people of Lantern. Shows you you got your year one returning survivors, hands of heat, watched. Uh, gives you all your milestones. Then you have your campaign types. Foretold is nodes predefined. Version campaign has open slots. So this is the one that shows people the sun. This is interesting because it still shows here that you're uh, adding level lantern year 22, 23, and 24. Your boss rush will be at the bottom for your nemesis and things. So that's cool. Nice to see that this is still exactly the same. So next we have Campaign Spread, which, again, shows the node cards as you draw them. Uh, so we have Smog Singers, which is interesting here. Suicidal Kings, which is labeled as a spicy draw, which shows you're adding Dragon King. Year 8, you get Meteor Storm, but then you draw plus 1 node 3. This is probably reflective of artwork we're going to see here in a second, but this is probably how you get Sky King armor and stuff like that. So you'll get these spicy draws, which is interesting. So then it tells you how to do filling node slots. We'll talk about darkness mode here in a second when it says full random all the yeah. time. That is darkness mode. Yeah, full random all the time is yeah. darkness mode, I think. Yeah. Before we go on, I'd like to go back a little bit and how you almost have to add like a session zero, like Dungeons and Dragons going forward to your game to like build your campaign and build your um, pattern decks, build, you know, your strain deck, all these kinds of like extra systems that you're adding in. Like it, it is a cool way to kind of engage with the game in a non multiplayer aspect. Like, you know, like probably like if I was going to build a campaign, like I'm going to be doing that independently of 
most of the other players, I imagine. Some people yeah. probably will do it all together, but in my experience, the people I play with wouldn't be really that interested in doing that kind of stuff. But I would be. Um, so yeah, pulling like a People of the Stars campaign card versus a People of the Dreamkeeper campaign card versus build pulling something that's completely blank. Um, yeah. Where you pick everything. Like it's it's a refreshing way to choose your campaigns, right? I agree. Or not even choose, like you're just given them. So um, this does also confirm that we will get uh, Gambler's Chest uh, node cards based on the Smog yep. Singers having Smog a card Singers. in that preview there. So that's a great thing. Uh, interestingly, it says that um, you should add the Harvested Singers uh, card to the basic hunt event deck in the bottom text there. So yes. that's a new that's a new hunt event that wasn't included in Gambler's Chest for the Smog Singers and something very particular to be added. That's like a basic hunt event. So uh, it'll be uh, interesting to see that. There's There's been a lot of Smog Singers content added to the game outside of Gambler's Chest already, which is, yeah. is uh, pretty neat. Um, you can also see from the Gorm card, it says Gorm Crush the White Lion is the prologue instead of just the White Lion's the first monster prologue. Yep. Um, so... I don't know if that's like a hint towards those being two very specifically different things, but we'll see, I guess. All right, so now we go to the pillar system. Pillar system is just extra. It doesn't really explain here how you add them or whatever. It just says that there's cards and you can maybe draw them, or maybe you can't, or maybe you just put them in. I don't know, it's called a, vom a Vomit Kaleidoscope, so. Yeah, I imagine because, you know, you only need two pillars in order for a game to become Advanced Kingdom Death. Yeah. Uh, based on the Gambler's Chest rules. So. so I would think that you can just draw, like, as many of these cards as you want or take whatever cards you want. Who um, knows? Uh, there might. There's probably going to be rules for, like. There has to be know, rules for this. <laughs> So the example. I mean, there doesn't really, there doesn't have to be rules. Well, but, okay. You know. So the first one given here is Ark Cells. This will be the this campaign utilizes Ark Survivors. Play with the Ark Settlement and Survivor record sheets during the settlement phase. Use Ark Survivors Settlement Board to hold Ark Survivor specific decks, and then it just says Year One First Meal. <laughs> yeah. So you know, basically, that's no different from saying. I'm going to play with Ark Survivors this game, right? Like it's, it's just that's what I mean. It's it's but I mean it should also tell you to add like intimacy, Ark intimacy should also tell you to add all the Ark settlement. Like it should you should be adding in all the philosophy. Like you need to add that's murder. That's all in the Gambler's Chess rule book. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> these are just previews, anyways. I'm sure these cards will change. Yeah, more. and then there's bone eaters. You just draw add bone eaters. Luck. There you go. <laughs> Lonely uh, Tree is apparently a pillar now. Yeah, which I actually love that. That, that makes sense. But yeah. I think it does add a lot more bookkeeping to the game. Yep. Or like housekeeping. Cause this was kind of this was kind of hinted at with GCE, because they tell you, hey, don't play this game with, with cards that are not in the game, basically, like monsters that are not in the game. Take out all the, the bannered cards. So me personally, I'm like not a fan of that. Like, I'd love to have just like massive decks of all the cards, but yep. this suggests that going forward, it's going to be really like, if it's not in your game, remove it from the decks, right? Like, only play with certain certain components or certain sections of components. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this. So then it, you got... it really seems like Gambler's Chess was prepping us for that. So then you got more here for an Echoes, which just add five of your fighting arts. Character, add character, <laughs> game box. Then we got this interesting one, which is collections. Uh, a survivor reaches 15 plus attribute total. Um, infinity puzzle. Have any thoughts on this? I have no idea what this is. Um, yeah, this is this artwork. This is artwork from Lorinda Tomko, I believe. It looks like her style. So it's probably pretty old artwork yeah it looks like gambler on how it looks i think it is gonna be the curator 
actually because maybe you know collection is maintained by a curator who knows so that that's kind of my speculation on this but otherwise i have no clue what this is going to be but yeah i don't even know I'm how this works i'm glad that it's not just um a survivor reaches 15 like plus attribute stuff, total yeah. what does that mean <laughs> i don't know it's just well i'm assuming that you just get 15 or more permanent attributes right but I, that's a very i don't even know if that's a super possible thing right now yeah who knows just more fuel for the dark impulse three fire uh, <laughs> lion knight they showcase that they're going to be adding more roll cards which i think is a really good way to yep. um, improve that showdown lion knight i think needs some of the most work out of i think a lot of these showdowns. need a lot of work they do they do a lot of them do need a lot of work but it is it is yeah welcome i i, I am very curious to see how much these expansions change from their original versions. It's going to be quite interesting, especially with 340 rulebook pages. Like, they can do a lot with that. Oh, yeah. Um, Manhunter, we're getting new gear. In yep. one of the previous updates, they had shown that there was a man trap. They had done gear artwork for it. You can actually see it in the rulebook, I believe. Um, but it suggests that probably we're going to get that man trap gear card and He's going to have some new interactions with his own gear, which is uh, very cool and will probably make it feel more like natural. I am curious to see if uh, level four Manhunter gets dropped um, and they only go up to level three. What do you think? Uh, I don't know. I hope it's only level three because they didn't put anything on the arc survivor sheets or anything like that for level four monsters, so... Like it doesn't, it doesn't. Yeah, that's, that's a, kind of why I'm anticipating it to be dropped because there isn't really any other level four monsters. I don't think, right? There are level four legendary monsters and stuff. But does a legendary monster count as level four? Sometimes. I don't, I don't really think so. <laughs> it just says it. Yeah, some. I think the lion, right? Uh, more calcified gear being shown for dung beetle knight, which is very cool. Now we have the calcified greater Gax, which. Greater Gax was already awesome. <laughs> uh, Calcified Disguise. Did you notice something interesting about Calcified Disguise? Yeah, this one is interesting to see how they'll do because the regular Hideous Disguise card is cursed. So technically, as printed currently, they don't release like a new version of Hideous Disguise. You can't really get rid of it to put in the Encase and Berry um story event as written so um probably hopefully they change that and get rid of that special rule on that item or else this card uh, kind of is unobtainable really but when the dung beetle knight expansion to come out they included a reprint of zan the zanbato and had included like it was like a double-sided card so these very much could be just reprinted versions of um, yes. Those original cards. Because they're decided, flipped so. over. So on the flip side, yeah. this Calcify Greater Gax should have a Greater Gax on the other side with the mineral keyword. So next we have the Synergy System. So this is where we will talk about Sky King armor. So Synergy cards. Here you have Dragon King plus Sunstalker. I don't know if this is supposed to be a card. Uh, it says it is. <laughs> I guess on the other side it would say add the patterns to your pattern deck i don't know what do you have, you have thoughts on this I, card i think that the back side of the card is clash of the sky kings right so I is think that what it is the idea i think it is yeah so oh, like okay. when you have like when you have these cards right you would have your synergy deck or whatever is this is this is how i imagine it works you would be drawing your campaign spread so you would have that kind of situation where it's like draw an extra node three right mm-hmm um, you draw Suicidal Kings, draw an extra node three. Okay, you got Infant Sunstalker. That makes you draw Sunstalker. Now you go through your Synergy deck. Do I have such and such monsters together? Dragon King and Sunstalker? Okay. I take this card. I don't know if you'll draw from like a sub deck out of that. And then you get Clash of Sky Kings or... It's just when this happens. That's how, that's how I imagine it. 
It's also it also shows you Clash of Sky Kings actually happens one year earlier on the timeline than that Meteor Storm yeah. Suicidal Kings happens. So I guess yeah, it could. Uh, I'm kind of like convincing myself out of my own argument, but um, yeah, I think the the Death World rules like that was introduced as a system in that kind of overview, right? These Death World rules will really outline how how players are supposed to interact with the campaign cards, node cards, synergy cards, uh, yeah. pillar cards. I assume like it's it's a whole thing. It's a whole big system, right? Yeah, I just assume the synergy deck here, all these cards will be on the back, which is synergy, and then you'll just, when you're done building your campaign, you'll look through your synergy deck and go, hey, I've got this. Time to do this. <laughs> this is insane yeah, it's artwork. Uh, it really highlights... How a Dragon King Flies? I have no idea. <laughs> Those wings would never carry. Did you uh did you did you see that this the Sunstalker's tentacle is like ripped right through the Dragon King's wing? Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's Dr cool. I never noticed that before. But... Yeah, Dragon King's not not doing well here. Um yeah. I don't it's know how like it is. A husk anyway, so. Yeah. So then this shows the Sky King armor, which is so cool. Sky King armor is really cool looking. Um, I don't know how it is you'd make it, but whatever. <laughs> it's totally cool. Um, here's another synergy card. We have the Flower Knight and Slenderman. This is probably uh, the dark art. The, what is it called? The dark, the, whatever that dark helmet guy is. What is that? Uh, what was the name of that armor? Dark Flower. Dark flower armor. That's probably what that is. There's probably some sort of event to build it. Uh, I don't know. I just don't, I don't know. You'll probably get some sort of something for Eve, right? Because her the Vespertine Indomitable thing. Who knows? <laughs> I think this is actually Flower Knight's POV because it's inside the fairy ring, but the fairy oh, ring yeah. is all wilted and. Like he's he's not gonna be or it's not gonna be very happy, right? Like yeah, it's like watching its last flower, and probably this is gonna oh yeah die or something like that. So yep. Then we get the uh, concept art of I guess more synergy story intros like Sky King. So I'll just go left from right for people that are flying around. The first one is People of the Wise One and Sunstalker. It's called Language Master. Um, kind of implies that they're going to get a lot of access to language or something. Some language, dream language, dragon speech. The next one over is People of the Valley and Dung Beetle Knight. Mushroom Frenzy. This one makes sense. You know, Dung Beetle Knight loves mushrooms. Lots of mushrooms. Uh, People of the Polished Mirror Stone and Gorm. This one's Mammoth Master. They're just barbarians, like taking over mammoth monsters. Maybe you'll only be able to fight like 3x3s three and up. Uh, Butcher and Lion King. This is tragedy. The artwork shows the Butcher killing either Ash or Sam or Ryan, which is actually very sad. Um, and this would obviously really upset the Lion Knight. Or did I say Lion King? <laughs> yeah, Lion, Lion King. Knight. Um, <laughs> so those are that's his troop members. So they're obviously very important to him. Uh, the next one is. Uh, Kingsman and Lion Knight, Unexpected Aid. The Lion Knight is interfering with the Kingsman attempt to call a settlement. Um, either because the Holy Lands are counter to the, sc the scribe, or more likely he probably just needs survivors for his play. <laughs> uh, Gorm and Slenderman is Black Acid Rain, which just makes sense. Gorms make rain. Slenderman makes black water or something. Dung Beetle Knight and Sunstalker Eclipse. This one's pretty interesting. It's it it's very reminiscent of the silhouette artwork from the Dung Beetle Knight uh, rule book, The yep. Rumbling in the Dark. White Lion and Manhunter Trained Lion. This is some of the original lore for the Butcher, so it's awesome to see this kind of come full circle from like over a decade ago now. Um, yeah, I really like that one. Uh, People of the Sun and Gorm. I don't know. I can't read what this one's called. It's very hard to read, but 
This looks to be the event that lets people of the sun craft the bone katana using gorm bones. Uh, Lion Knight and Lion God follow the Silver City. Um, I'm still in the belief, lore-wise, that the uh, Holy Lands were not involved with the Silver City, so we have to wait to see if this one comes out. That's like a common fan speculation. Um, I just think that this kind of shows like the same fiery gas effect that shows when stories are being told. Like you see the physical yep. manifestation of the story. So I think it's literally just the Lion Knight telling them the story of the Lion God and the Silver City. Yep. I you can see Ash, Ryan, and Sam are helping him. They're holding up pieces and stuff. Yeah. They're like helping him do his little play. Cool though. Like I love when they show artwork of like stories in physical space, I suppose. Um, we've got Phoenix and Flower Knight, Eternal Bloom. This is Phoenix's dung using time properties to make everything grow super well. So the Flower Knight's probably, like, loving that. Complete opposite of the Slender Man and Flower Knight synergy. Um, we've got... Dragon King and Spidiculis, Radioactive Spiderlings. This is personally my least favorite of the artwork or synergy things. Um, but the Dragon King, I guess, mutates spiderlings into some new form, which I guess makes sense because he's able to transform a screaming antelope into the nucalope. So yep. it is what it makes is. Makes sense to me. Yeah, we've got uh, Flower Knight and Gorm, Acid Flower Knight. I think this one's interesting conceptually, like the acid rain from Gorm infuses into the flower knight it looks like and then lion god and manhunter dark fusion i think this is some kind of like necromancer influence over the manhunter um and i'm again arguing with my own my own arguments i guess or countering my own arguments but this might give credence to the holy lands versus silver city theory if it's like some kind of weird technology or weapon that targets holy lands creatures like the manhunter but TBD, well, specifically the heart. We'll see. It looks like it's targeting his heart specific. Yeah, like the hunter's heart. Yep. Yeah. And maybe the fluid inside a hunter's heart just doesn't like interact with like the silver knowledge worm goop, you know, very well. We'll see. But very cool. Like I really like these interactions between monsters. It adds a lot of depth to the world. Um, and. They have literally so many ways to explore this between different combinations of monsters. It's wild. Yep, definitely. It is It is really cool. Next we have the strain system. This one is interesting because it says, now we can formally bring the system to its proper home and introduce new strain milestone cards to further enhance the reward your kingdom death monster life, or and, and reward your kingdom death monster life from campaign to campaign. We selected two no cards to share here to illustrate our design point without spoiling without spoiling too much. So this is the supernova strain. This is milestone condition complete the dying done campaign. Uh, teaming blobs roll merely through pools of their own prismatic vomit. The calling never comes. Heedlessly, they dart and ripple, scattering along the beams of light, reflecting off the gleaming stone. Add Infant Sunstalker to your Node 3 quarry deck. And this was the card that was shown up before, where you'd get the Lantern Year 4 intro event to hunt the infants, which the Urgent Care right. Keeper or something. I forget exactly what it was called. Yeah. But this very basic strain, this is almost like exactly what we expect now from strains. It's like not even like that big of a alteration here then you get the mile uh wise one strain which is just your campaign ends and your settlement has a leg as ball innovation that's pretty much it and then you can add the wise one campaign card to your campaigns interesting yeah, i think this is a great way to grow out those campaign systems any system really can be affected by strain cards and you talked about this before like how echoes of death four kind of um, shifted how strain cards are even going to work in general. Like, it's yes. not so much um, like a... How would you phrase that? Sorry. No longer going to be checked during the check milestone phase, it looks. It looks like they're more instant instant trigger. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so this is includes CC rewards for all of the expansion of Death Volume 1 monsters. We had talked a little bit in the Black Knight video about Nemesis monsters, so it'll be interesting to see if we get um, CC reward cards for Butcher and Kingsman and Hand. Uh, yeah, only time will tell. So leading into that, we've also got scout support. So we see that we're going to get scout tablets for all the monsters as well, as well as some scout discovery cards. So we get the Dung Beetle Knight tablet, um, which gives us the counter spin ability. When you're on the left side of the Dung Beetle Knight, you may spend one survival to spin in place and ignore a baller. How valuable do you think that is? Uh, how valuable do I think that is? Counter spin itself, not very valuable. Uh... It's okay. Um, so we'll also get scout discovery cards. Um, there's an image shown in here that's very strange because it says, ooh, what have we found? And it's not of any existing monster. Not any existing quarry monster, I should... I should. Yes, okay. Rephrase. Yes. My personal opinion is that this represents a troll bird, that's, which yes. is uh, currently a hunt event. I agree uh, with so you. So it is an existing monster. Uh, we had also talked about the potential of this being some kind of weird, like, hybrid monster. It's kind of yeah. got teeth on the inside of its hands. It could be, like, some mixture of Screaming Antelope and Phoenix. But I really think that they're just going to extend scout discoveries to events that occur outside of the hunt, which I think is cool. Gives us a chance to see things like Cancer Pigeons or, um, like, the needle-beaked birds or whatever, mad flies, stuff like that. Like, other other parts of the ecology of Kingdom Death that we only really interact with um, narratively versus visually, I suppose. Yep, I agree. Next, we have the Wanderer update. So, this is all interesting. Starts with Candy and Cola. So, this is where we actually see more Wanderer books. We've seen them before in... Um, with luck, obviously, in Gamble's Chest, but they seem to all follow the same thing. Candy and Cola's here is interesting. Uh, you can see she's shackled, so she must be keeping true to the Traveler story that was pitched. Do you agree? Yeah, I hope so, because... It was a I very cool story. The Traveler story is, like, one of the coolest round pieces of Kingdom Death lore. Um, so I do really hope they stick with that. Yep. Yeah. And she isn't shackled, so I, I think she maybe she did to fight herself out. She's got these lock and key on her thing, so she must have been enslaved, something, or captured, a uh, prisoner, yeah. something. Because you can see she's wearing a shackle with a key. She still has it on her when you meet her. You can see in the book here where she's down, I don't know, sitting around a something, making tea. Lantern pit. <laughs> yeah, they're making tea. You can see her drinking her tea, the smoke. She's telling them the story about how she fought her way out with her heel or whatever that was. But you can see on her, she still has the lock. Mm -hmm. um, this this Wanderer book has a lot of cipher language in it. It doesn't translate to anything. It just keeps saying, um, this is an intro paragraph like over and over again. Uh, is is essentially what it boils down to. There might be a couple more words in that, but... It's uh, it's just filler text. So um, the next wanderer. Well, you can see her photo resin here. She's got her um, interesting here because she's got her cola is her fox thing or whatever this was. I think it's like a nine tails fox. I don't know exactly what it is, but it's her little thing. Uh, it has keys, so maybe she lost it. And you have to find it. That's maybe her story. Hmm. Yeah, well, Cola uh, isn't with her in the artwork, so yeah. it makes me a little bit worried, but I don't know if they'd, like, kill off Cola like that, right? I don't know. They wouldn't do that, would they? I don't know. <laughs> oh, no. It'd be in bad taste, right, because the company's defunct. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, the next Wanderer is Goth Amy. Goth Amy's booklet actually does have content written in it so this is the one that's interesting to talk about um the intro paragraph there the the role results are too small to translate but the intro paragraph says a buzzing sensation in her core guides her footfalls in meandering spirals through the darkness her mind is trapped in an airless husk and is drowning she is not alone but the others are dead still they reach for her 
A glow in the distance brings her back to her aching body. A stranger emerges from the darkness. Um, so yeah, the rest of the page is just general rules and or just overly hard to translate because of its blurriness. But that's yeah. cool. That was like a nice find. If if every single one of these in the update had been like, this is preview, this is a preview, this is a preview, you know, I would have been a little bit yeah irked by the amount of time I spent, which I don't really want to admit, uh, translating these pages. So yeah, I'm glad we got a little bit of a little thing. So yeah, cool. Pretty yeah. cool. No one else talks about Inner Lantern 2, right? Goth. Goth Amy, right? It's like an Inner Lantern check. Um, it was a pottery check at the end there. Basically. No, I thought in the in the thing, it's like if you have Inner Lantern, she like spr- I forget. I thought it was an Inner Lantern check. Um, I don't think it was specified. It does say like if you innovated, but it doesn't specify what. Oh, okay. what that part's not in there i just left that out because it was uh, not really like so, valuable information so next we have aeneas um aeneas not really much to talk about like we just see the artwork. no I, no i think this is the first one on the on the list i think like it was mentioned complete. last black friday that should be the first one to come out and then we have the hyper drifter or death. What is it? Hyper death drifter, or I guess it just says yeah, death right. drifter now. But death drifter, hyper light death drifter, or whatever. Yeah, I love this model's cool because I love the uh, blue lantern strapped to the sword, which I'm assuming is going to like ignite the sword. I've never played hyper light drifter, but um, I think he has like an energy sword or something, doesn't he? Yeah, I think so. Uh, next, we go to the promos of death. So the promos of death were the original Kickstarter one uh, promos. So this is the, I think, it doesn't mention here that these are being, well, it says they're being tuned up and brought into modern KDM era. I don't know what that means. It says old content will be reminted as either cards or seed patterns. I don't know if this means they're going to release these minis in the new scale. I wish it would have just yeah, I think said the, that. I think the minis are staying the same. I don't think they're going to adjust them. Um, but yeah, just the content. So like beyond the wall, instead of having the two gear cards, is going to be two seed patterns and two seed pattern gears now. Correct. So, and all this stuff will be in the card pack. Yeah. Some cool stuff. Like we got a legendary card with snow. Um, that's yep. new content. Twilight Knight because a pillar card that's shown off. Like the hooded knight gets added as a, as a milestone. Um, Holiday Nico story in the snow settlement event will get added with a pillar card, it looks like. Yep. And then we get a new settlement and pillar with Paul, as well as a legendary card for Aya. Yeah. I am a little bit sad about the, um, the reduction of some of this content. A lot of these characters had special scenarios that were added in yep. the beta scenarios rulebook, and it feels a little bit like reductionary to just kind of boil them down to like one pillar card or one settlement event or yep. whatever however this content works but especially snow um, snow had really cool stuff yeah her fight was interesting and had some cool lore behind it as well but i guess it's just the way it is you know not everything can make it out of beta territory so, so next we got false messengers this is an interesting box again this was kickstarter one stuff this has the one pillar card, which just adds settlement event messengers to your settlement event deck and year on year five of the timeline. <laughs> uh, I don't know what will happen with that settlement event. I guess you just get I one no that clue. haven't hasn't been. If you, what you, one of them will come that hasn't already been here, I guess. And then yeah, add, I suppose I. This is the best part about this. Uh, in my opinion, for this one pillar, it says add all disorders with the messenger keyword to your disorder deck. This is showing you that you don't add all this stuff to your disorder deck right away, which is great. <laughs> yeah, those cards might have like the excluded card symbol on them yeah, as well. Yeah, hopefully they do. So don't don't add them until they're they're requested to be added. Yeah. But yeah, again, like just like the promos of death box, like all these false messengers had beta scenario oh, kind yeah. of events that they did, showdowns or special 
really they're just showdown scenarios. Um, so to boil them all four of them down to like one settlement event card, uh, um, I am curious to see how it how it how it. Yes, how this it one I'm out, more understandable of. I think. Uh, I don't. I think. I don't even know if are these the original minis because these look like they have custom bases. Did the I thought the original minis did uh, not. These have are them. the original minis. Yeah. Oh, okay. No, they did. But yeah, and again, it's awesome that these are included in Legendary Card Pack too, because that's going to really cut out FOMO for people that already have them. I'll yeah. probably pick up both of these box sets because I don't have any of these miniatures. Most of these miniatures I don't have. Um, so next we have the Super Survivors, which is a vignette of death. So this is a pillar. Uh, this was a promo thing. Now it's been just downscaled to a vignette. Now a vignette of death. Uh, Platinum Dung Beetle Knight in Savior's Dream as Super Survivors. Enter a pillar card, which can bring survivors or bring saviors into any campaign. Next, we have the Silver City update. This one is super interesting. This one- this one was like kind of out of the blue, hey, because they didn't really talk about any of the like uh, expansions of Death Volume Two stuff in the rest of this. I agree. This is like Silver City and Abyssal Woods, like here you go. Yep. Uh, but my boy Leaping Octopus gets a shout out on the crest, so I am one hundred percent for this. Yep. Um, I did just notice a kind of interesting detail, though. If you want to talk about it quickly, yeah. What? is in this crest it shows the actual silver city in the background right Mm -hmm. the silver city shares a lot of design traits with the smog city in gambler's chest do you think i'd have to look again i can't do they have domed built like this dome shape with these candle glowing like points above them as well same way Hmm. interesting something to keep an eye on so next we have the silver relic armor update, and it just shows. This sick. Yep. Uh, no idea what this is, but <laughs> it's such like a Dark Souls armor. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea what this even is, but I'm assuming you can make this from a Lion God. So making Lion God have an armor set is good. Good in my book. Then we have spoopy bone eaters. Yeah, actually that armor, I'm wondering if it's going to... Like, the arms are like maces, right? So mm-hmm. I'm wondering if the the arm armor is going to also be a weapon, like a club and locked or something like that. Like, you're not able to use other weapons while you have this. I just yeah. realized this poopy bone eater here, he got broke coming home from Gen Con, I guess. Oh, yeah, you can see that, yeah. That's the problem with these resin minis. Mm-hmm. There's this your boy, not going Leaping on Octopus. Yep. There he is, my boy. So, um, and then we see that uh, in the Abyssal Woods expansion, uh, we're going to get the Lotus as a Nemesis, uh, Node 1 Nemesis. This is a change, I think. Um, originally, it was supposed to be an encounter counter, monster. Yeah. But this model is actually really, really good. Oh, too. yeah. And this was some of Lorinda Tomko's art artwork. So uh, I'm I'm fond of it. Next, we have the Q&A. There are a lot of questions here. But this is, again, another time in which second edition is mentioned. Yeah, the second time that second edition Kingdom Death Monster was mentioned this year. Yep. Uh, um, so I really think that Kingdom KDM second edition is is coming. It's probably in the works, like with updated monster sculpts and like bringing back a lot of these these systems and concepts that they've introduced into the game recently and really like fixing or maybe not fixing but bringing the core game up to like where the rest of the game is now especially after campaigns of death i think it'll be really necessary so when we'll see that i don't know i don't think it's a joke anymore though like the first time yeah it's like okay funny joke adam but the second time it's like okay okay adam (laughs) but yeah it's gonna probably be if, if it's released that'll be an expensive expensive box but yeah new encounter monsters as separate releases i'm all for that i think the game has a lot of room for a lot of different encounter monsters i'm i'm very strong proponent of that so giant crab spiders is cool earlier in the first video we talked about how 
Adam had mentioned hissing cockroaches as a monster being tooled. Mm -hmm. So I am curious if maybe that's like shifted from hissing cockroaches to giant crab spiders or like they're just some kind of generic large insect that can be fought. Yeah, giant crab spiders. Very cool. Um, there was a question asking about philosophies and campaigns of death, which Adam said no. There's not going to be any. Um, so if we are going to get core philosophies for some of these new campaigns, uh, like the people of the Wise One, people of the Valley, people of the Mirrorstone, they'll probably they're probably going to end up being sold separately, like Starbound and Heliocentrism have been for people of the Stars and people of the Sun. Correct. Um, yeah. So question about um some of the other monsters in the game getting indomitable resources uh but it was confirmed in a later question that yeah screaming antelope and white lion would be getting indomitable resources so i can i think we can expect them for most especially with the vespertine pole axe or pole arm um included on the eve model so we should be getting probably a couple for each monster i imagine Fade and Percival white box reprints are coming this year, probably alongside the release of Black Knight and Frog Dog. Um, Percival would make sense to release with Black Knight because their content is pretty related. Fade might be this this year, might release later on with the uh, Red Witches. I don't know. We don't know when those will be coming out in the end. Somebody asked the question about the release of the Wet Nurse as a monster, and Adam said, is the world ready for the Wet Nurse? Me personally, yes, I am ready for the wet nurse. Please produce that as a monster. That's what got me into Kingdom Death, so um, I'm really uh, happy to would be happy to see that as a monster. Um, so we're almost at the the ending of the the update. The next part was the new philosophy. Yes, the new philosophies. Kind of, these were available for pre order. Uh, two of these are core, and one of them is Gatherism, which was... Yeah, I don't I don't think it says it here, but I think Gatherism said it was a Tier 2 on the backer kit. I don't have the link to the backer kit anymore, but... Um, these booklets also had some cipher text. Unfortunately, when you translate these, it just says this is an intro paragraph, this is an intro paragraph, etc., etc. So no new information from that. I do have to say, like, the artwork in these so good like the heliocentrism artwork that they showed especially mm -hmm. i love that that's that's so sick looking um mm -hmm. i also thought it was interesting the heliocentrism art also shows like samurai or like a variant of samurai from the generic line yes and then yeah and then starbound shows the dragon slayer from the generic line yes so it makes me wonder if they're going to introduce some strain um fighting arts like through these philosophies yes this uh, is a variant that, that really of samurai me, yeah. i thought i remember i had said that in the live stream but i couldn't go look it up and everything but this is it's a, i knew it looked familiar it's a variant of samurai and the other one i did know for sure was the uh uh generic dragon slayer which is so interesting to include in the uh starbound philosophy yeah they really so, stand out to me as like like you know something's going on so it's got to be it's got to be strained fighting arts that are outside of echoes of death i don't know it just says it includes pattern cards here it just says two plastic uh starbound miniatures starbound philosophy book starbound knowledge philosophy card innovation two patterns the this is one of the most interesting ones because of the lore implications for this one i don't know we don't need to go too far in the weeds with starbound but yes i remember when reading this and it said master the dragon slayer style and you'd have to assume that the tyrant is teaching you this it's interesting that's that's kind of why i lean towards it being like some kind of echo fighting art like maybe these aren't like all of the cards that are included like it includes these but maybe there's some other stuff yeah um like the two times miniatures right like we've got they're showing art for some people of the stars guy dressed fancy, but then also the dragon um, sacrifice. But also, yes. like I want to hear your Slayer, opinion you know, on like, the dragon sacrifice. Um, what do you think about yeah. that? Well, the sentence that it says "become the dragon sacrifice yes. for a chance for one-on-one -on -one combat" is pretty interesting. Like it 
makes it sound like you're gonna fight like a dragon king or something like one-on-one like yeah one survivor yeah so i don't know maybe like these these booklets having the cost to them like maybe they'll be pretty heavy content like you know i yeah i i don't know yeah it's another we'll dragon see. king another dragon king expansion that's it's another dragon king expansion mini that uh deals with stairs too did you notice that yeah, got to ascend or descend, I guess. Yeah, it's weird. Uh, the painter scale looks really nice too. They added all this extra kind of detail in the back. Which oh is, yeah. Um, yeah, if I was a painter, I'd be like, "That's a good. That's a good figure." And they are on the back. They were available on the back for pre-order. There is no mention of when they'll be released. I think it was said that they want to try to release them alongside campaigns of death. Yeah, that's what I think they had mentioned as well. So. Yeah. And that makes sense, because you kind of need that content in addition to Campaigns of Death. Uh. <laughs> Mark Survivor campaign, campaigns in those. Uh. Uh. So here's Anyways, one... moving on from that. Yeah, you don't need them. <laughs> you don't need them. Well, you them. don't need them, but you kind of need them, you know. <laughs> yeah. No comment on that part. We're just going <laughs> to leave that one where it is. Um, so literally the ending wrapping up the, the, the whole kind of update thing, we've got artwork for the screaming nucleope, which has been talked about for a long time. Uh, it looks sick. Danny oh, Cruz yeah. is back. I love his, uh, he did some, a lot of the early, early concept work for kingdom death. So, um, yeah, this is, he looks very powerful. Oh yeah. So you we'll have any see. opinions on the tail? The tail it reminds me kind of of uh, or Lion God a little bit, but I mean I'm assuming it's this is it's just not a bushy tail because it's flashes rotted off from the radiation. Yeah, like a t- tapeworm or something. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I don't know. It's so interesting because there's no. Yeah, the light. story behind this was the playtesting team had spent like a ton of time building a nuclear scythe mm-hmm. from Dragon King, and then it immediately got eaten by a screaming antelope so they're like that's an awesome opportunity to make like a strain card um so that birthed the the screaming nucleope yeah um we also see the model picture of the witch of the east star this her artwork was shown like 2021 or something like that yeah. kind of she became like a community fan favorite and just the way they phrase this makes it sound like she is intended to become like a like a monster or something and in we talked about in the first video adam had made a comment about how he would make her like a node three nemesis or core monster or something so it it would be just wild for them to just drop like a random uh miniature like that could be released as like a naked future kind of drop i suppose but it really gives me atmos vibes like which of the east star it was like an easter update that she was shown so it makes me think that perhaps there might be like a series of nemesis monsters that are all like holiday related related like we've got atnes we've got which of the east star we would have like um grisarius or whatever his name was yeah i have no yeah, idea Rosarius how to parse this for easter yeah it's it's very random it's very random we'll and like very crazy to think about <laughs> the white pox would have yeah, been I- how would it be? How could it be a white box? It can't be a white box anymore. It's it's just crazy. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, she's got a three by three base. It looks like too. So yeah, she's big. Yep. And then lastly, we have the shipping Chan scout model, which is awesome. Like I really yep. want this miniature. I agree. So, all kinds of stuff. Uh, interesting. She doesn't have a raccoon. I would have thought she would have had some sort of raccoon with her, but she doesn't. He might be peeking out in the back somewhere or something. Yeah, in the bag. Like a little stuffed animal of him at least. Yeah. Don't know. But I would have really thought so. She's definitely, definitely interesting. Um Yeah, I don't know what I don't know what she's gonna have for her release. She's definitely not wearing scout gear. I mean she is wearing scout gear, but I mean the ver- if- those aren't vermin belly boots. <laughs> If she's just released as a miniature, I'd still buy her even without content. Oh, yeah, for sure. I like this mini. Um, I would prefer content, but... Oh, I'm sure she'll have something with her. It is what it is. 
Um, so yeah, just blasting through, like that was the update, huge update. I know that took us a, a lot of time to talk about, um, but yeah, there was a sale that was released at the same time as the update. We had the non-backer release of the Gambler's Chess expansion. It was available for people to buy publicly. Uh, there's content releases. It was the Screaming Sun Armor Lucy was released in hard plastic. And as well as the beta release of the Sun Lantern Armor yeah. uh, kit. I mean, I just did videos uh, we also those, like three weeks ago. Yeah. We had a re-release of the White Sun Lion Urza that sold out. I know people are looking forward to seeing that come into the store again. Some of the content releases or content lists releases uh, was the Waiting in the Rail Yard Chipping Chan Painter's Scale Mini, which we talked about at the very beginning of this video, like three hours ago. Yeah. Uh, there's a Naked Future 2023 box set with a Plastic Sparrow King and the Oblivion Mosquito Armor. And there's re-releases, which included the Naked Forbidden Bundle with the Plastic King, the Scribe, Great Game Hunters, and Twilight Cloak Mini, the Naked Questing Maids, the Naked Cat Eater Knight, and the Naked Nightmare Ram. I thought it was interesting that the Naked Futures bundle that includes Storm Knight, the Forge Priest, and Silence Male and Silence Female was not re-released. Uh, yeah. So I'm curious why they didn't we didn't release that again. Well, they did a um, different Futures you, bundle. So they probably only maybe want to limit it to one at a time on the shop. Yeah, maybe. Because they're not cheap. <laughs> maybe... Uh, Maybe Storm Knight's closer than uh, Naked Future suggests, you know? I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Um, this sale, and you talked about this a little bit a while ago, was also the first only digital release for now of mm -hmm. game content, which was Morg, which featured the greatest Gax pattern card, pattern gear card, and the Gorm and Domino resource. I guess we should do a video at some point talking about those cards, right? Because it was like a, uh, a release. We I, never discussed it. I thought about it. Um, I agree with you. I think it's going to come out in physical, so I just haven't. So you're just going to wait? You're to hold off? <laughs> yeah. That's fair. Okay, and our last update of the year, update 112, Death Mist 2023. This update actually doesn't really have anything interesting <laughs> to talk about in it. It's just like a 2D game. No, really, it's just a 2D game screenshot and... Uh, I don't know if the, it was a joke to say, like, photos, photos, like, leave the photos out. Um, but, yeah, it just, it just was an update saying that, like, frog dog samples came in. And yeah, Black which is Knight was interesting. on a boat, so. Well, whatever. It is what it is. And that is everything that happened in 2023 Kingdom Death, more or less. <laughs> yes, definitely more. <laughs> I... I it is it is very more, but I thought of one less thing that we didn't talk about that I'm not going to talk about. Interesting. The only the the most interesting thing is the 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 Jack Frost thing in the background is like is that legit? Is that canon? Yeah, I don't know. I thought it was Wendy's know. thing, right? Isn't Wendy sitting on one of those? Oh, maybe. I have to look. Um. Yeah. Anyways, what are you? What are your thoughts? What are your takeaways for twenty twenty three Kingdom Death? I mean, it's always How a good are you year. About it? No, it's always a good year. This is the best year in the last seven years, right? It's always a good year when you actually get something delivered from the Kickstarter. So there we go. Yeah. So yeah, I'm looking forward to twenty twenty four. There's lots of content on the horizon. Obviously, we've talked for like literally probably eight hours straight on <laughs> yeah. just what happened on this year alone. Um, so look forward to Kingdom Death Year in Review 2024. Let us know what your thoughts are. What was your favorite thing released this year? What are you looking forward to? Leave a comment, leave a like, leave a follow, leave a subscription. I don't know how YouTube works. Um, yeah. Thanks for listening to us talk for a really long time. Yes. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. <laughs> Toodaloo! <laughs>